The death of Queen Victoria on January 22, 1901, ended an era in which most of her British subjects knew no other monarch. Her 63-year reign saw the growth of an empire on which the sun never set. Victoria restored dignity to the English monarchy and ensured its survival as a ceremonial political institution. Queen Victoria was born at Kensington Palace in London, on 24 May 1819. She was the only daughter of Edward, Duke of Kent, fourth son of George III. She came to the throne after the death of her uncle, King William IV, in 1837. Warm-hearted and lively, Victoria had a gift for drawing and painting. She was a natural diarist who kept journals regularly throughout her life. Queen Victoria is associated with Britain's great age of industrial expansion, economic progress and especially empire. At the time of her death, it was said, Britain had a worldwide empire on which the sun never set. In the early part of her reign, she was influenced by two men, her first Prime Minister, Lord Melbourne, and her husband, Prince Albert, whom she married in 1840. Both men taught her a lot about how to be a ruler in a constitutional monarchy, in which the monarch had very few powers but could use much influence. Albert developed a keen interest in the arts, sciences, trade, and industry. The main project for which he is best remembered was the Great Exhibition of 1851, the profits from which helped to establish the South Kensington Museum's complex in London. Victoria and Albert constructed royal residences at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight and at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, and became increasingly detached from London. They had nine children between 1840 and 1857. Most of their children married into other royal families of Europe. In 1861, Albert died. Victoria was deeply saddened over the death of her beloved husband and subsequently sank into severe depression. Victoria's grief was such that she rarely appeared in public, although she never neglected her official correspondence, and continued to give audiences to her ministers and official visitors, she was reluctant to resume a full public life. Benjamin the Prime Minister at that time, persuaded her to come out of seclusion, and she was impressed by his efforts to strengthen and expand the British Empire. In 1876, he had her made the Empress of India, a title which pleased her and made her a symbol of imperial unity. During the last few decades of her life, her popularity, which had suffered during her long public absence, increased greatly. She never embraced the social and technological advances of the 19th century but accepted the changes, and worked hard to fulfill her ceremonial duties as head of state. During Victoria's long reign, direct political power shifted from the sovereign. A series of acts broadened the social and economic base of the electorate. Despite this decline in the sovereign's power, Victoria showed that a monarch who had a high level of prestige, and who was prepared to master the details of political life could exert a significant influence. In her later years, she became the symbol of the British Empire. Both the Golden and the Diamond Jubilees, held to celebrate the 50th and 60th anniversaries of the Queen's accession, were marked with great displays and public ceremonies. On both occasions, colonial conferences attended by the Prime Ministers of the self-governing colonies were held. Despite her old age, Victoria continued her duties to the end. And that made her Britain's longest reigning monarch up to that point. By this time, old age had begun to take its toll, and the Queen suffered from failing eyesight and had trouble walking, among other health problems. By Christmas time of 1900, which she spent at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight, her health had further declined, and after the new year, she suffered a cerebral hemorrhage, which is a type of stroke. By the following day, the Queen's health was worse. She stayed in bed all day, unaware of who was by her bedside. Early in the morning of January 19, Queen Victoria seemed to rally. She asked Dr. Reed if she was better, to which he assured her that she was. But she quickly slipped out of consciousness again. It had become obvious to Dr. Reed that Queen Victoria was dying. He summoned her children and grandchildren. At 6.30 p.m. on January 22, Queen Victoria passed away, surrounded by her family, at the Osborne House on the Isle of Wight. Queen Victoria had left very detailed instructions as to how she wanted her funeral. This included specific things she wanted inside her coffin. Many of the items were from her beloved husband, Albert, who had died in 1861. 
On January 25, Dr. Reed carefully placed the items Queen Victoria had requested in the bottom of her coffin, Albert's dressing gown, a plaster cast of Albert's hand, and photographs. When that was done, Queen Victoria's body was lifted into the coffin with the help of her sons and grandchildren. Then, as instructed, Dr. Reed helped place Queen Victoria's wedding veil over her face and, once people departed, he placed a picture of her favorite personal attendant John Brown in her right hand, which he covered with flowers. When all was ready, the coffin was closed and then carried to the dining room where it was covered with the Britain's flag. On February 1st, Queen Victoria's coffin was moved from Osborne House and placed on the ship Alberta, which carried the Queen's coffin across the Solent to Portsmouth. On February 2nd, the coffin was transported by train to Victoria Station in London. From Victoria to Paddington, the Queen's coffin was carried by gun carriage, since Queen Victoria had requested a military funeral. She had also wanted a white funeral, so the gun carriage was pulled by eight white horses. The streets along the funeral road were crowded with people who wanted to get a last glimpse of the Queen. As the carriage passed by everyone remained silent. Once at Paddington, the Queen's coffin was placed on a train and taken to Windsor. At Windsor, the coffin was again placed on a gun carriage pulled by white horses. Queen Victoria's coffin was then placed in St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, where it remained in the Albert Memorial Chapel for two days under guard. On the evening of February 4, Queen Victoria was laid to rest at Frogmore Mausoleum, in Windsor, alongside her husband Albert, who had died in 1861. The Queen's death was literally the end of an era, which spanned 1837 to 1901, the years of her reign. Though just 18 years old at the time she became Queen, over the course of her life Victoria oversaw Britain's transition to an industrialized nation, as well as its expansion into the British Empire.